Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Beginning of May, so we thought we'd bring you some May Jeep news. Let's dive right in. We got a few things to cover. Top of the list is the all new Gladiator in the Tuscadero pink. If you follow Stellantis North America on social media, they released a clip with a bunch of Tuscadero Wranglers, and hidden in there was a Tuscadero Gladiator. Uh, followed up by Jeep shared the same, uh, same post. There's content going around of whether that was an AI image or not. Regardless, they're finally bringing the Tuscadero pink to the Gladiator. Uh, hopefully that will maybe help some Gladiator sales. I don't know. We know there is a following for that color. Uh, personally, I love it. I think it's a great color. Speaking of the Gladiator, they're bringing the 4xE to the Gladiator platform. But are they? Are you holding your breath? I say that because they've been talking about this for a long time. And here's my concern with bringing the 4xE platform to the Gladiator is, uh, I assume it's gonna be a 2025 model, uh, which they did talk about at last previous car shows and stuff like that, auto shows. But my concern is, there's we know there's change in that 4xE platform. So are you gonna, if you own this 2025 Gladiator, are you gonna own something that maybe you know, they only made the Gladiator in a 4xE platform for two or three years, and then it moved to a different platform. I have a funny suspicion that the Wrangler and Gladiator are all going to move to the same platform that this new Ram Charger is on. And if you're not familiar with what that is, uh, we'll do a video more specifically on it. But basically is the Ram Charger has an internal combustion motor under the hood that acts solely as a generator, and the whole driveline system is 100% electric. The 4xE, the internal combustion engine, does propel the vehicle. In the Ram Charger lineup, it will not actually propel the vehicle. It will only charge the electrical system. Have you been waiting for the Gladiator 4xE? What are your thoughts? Are you gonna jump on that opportunity? Regardless, I think, it's, I think they should have done it years ago, so I'm happy they are bringing that platform to the Gladiator. So let's talk about the world's fastest SUV. If you rewind back to 1998, the Grand Cherokee Limited 5.9, they made little over 14,000 of them and they only made them in three colors. If you look at those stats today, you know, zero to 60 in probably eight seconds, I don't even remember what it is off the top of my head. If you look at those stats today, they're kind of laughable, which back then they were not at all. So it looks like Jeep is going to try and take that title again with the world's fastest SUV. So behind me on my screen is the Wagoneer S. A few years ago, they, Jeep put on their social media that they were asking their enthusiasts and their audience to help name the Wagoneer. And there were some great comments of what the, what the name of that vehicle would be. Got a funny feeling Wagoneer S wasn't the top of the list. That's just my opinion. It shouldn't be named the Wagoneer in my opinion. Like the Ford Mach-E Mustang, that shouldn't be a Mustang, right? This shouldn't be the Wagoneer S. Just my two cents. There are a lot of other very clever names for the vehicle. At any rate, this is going to be an all-electric SUV. It looks to be about the size of a Grand Cherokee. Needless to say, I haven't seen it. Um, but it's going to be all electric, and they are claiming it will be the world's fastest SUV. Faster than the Trackhawk, Grand Cherokee, world's fastest SUV. So let's see if they pull this off. Uh, it looks to, like it's going to start about $80,000. So I think the fact that it's full electric and $80,000, you're going to limit your audience right there. Having said that, there are plenty of high-line full electric vehicles that this will probably compete with. So I'm curious, are you out there? Are you waiting for this Grand Wagoneer S? What are your thoughts of the name of it? What are your thoughts of what it is? Uh, let's hear your thoughts. We're gonna share some, uh, some images of it here as well. We'll be out this fall. So fingers crossed, we'll start to see it uh, in a few months. So how about the new Jeep Recon? This was released a little while ago as a concept. Again, going to be another full electric kind of reminds me a little bit of the the commander love the look of it i think it's going to be great it's going to be another vehicle another jeep vehicle that the doors will actually come off so maybe be a little bit um, of a competition or fill the gap for someone who wants the wrangler but maybe needs a little more room or it looks like it's going to be priced a little differently that was going to be also a full electric vehicle 
But there's been grumblings in the background that they will bring this out as an internal combustion engine option as well. So let's stay attuned to that one and see what happens. Maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe they'll put that Hurricane inline six in that, in that vehicle. For that matter, do you think that Hurricane inline six is coming to the Wrangler? Because I think there's a good opportunity there. And that would be awesome. I want to take a brief pause and thank one of our collaborators, site sponsors, is Hook Off-Road. Uh, if you have not seen their product, I highly, highly recommend it. And I don't just say that because they help with the channel. I will say they have sent us some product. We have a video of an installation on some side steps. Guys, I've installed a lot of side steps, Smitty Built, and Fabs, uh, and all of the in between. These Hook Roads take the cake. Nice quality, nice quality powder coat, really nice packaging when it gets to your door, high quality stuff and great customer service. If you use the code JOTR uh, when you check out and there's a link in the description, you'll save some money and you also help support the channel just a little bit as well. So if you're looking for some off-road steps, tube doors, bumpers, roof racks, any of that kind of adventure stuff, check out Hook Road and I'll leave a link in the description below. So thanks again to them for help sponsoring our channel. We also want to thank Detroit News. We were in the newspaper regarding the Wrangler recall. Uh, myself, as well as Chris Hall from the 4xE Enthusiast page, we were both quoted in the, uh, in the Detroit newspaper. So if you haven't uh, checked that out, you can check out Detroit News online. But there's a real nice article about the 4xE uh, some of the recalls that have been going on and some of the confusion that's been happening. And uh, I think they did a nice job with that news article. And I think it's a good thing that they're talking about it, getting that information out. If you have any questions about the 4xE content or those recalls, check our channel. We've got a ton, ton of content on what's been going on there. We were also cited in Detroit News about a year ago. Uh, it was a little bit before this Grand Wagoneer S was revealed. And they talked to me and asked me about what we thought of like the seven slots. And, you know, traditionally the, the grill opening is designed for cooling and for airflow to come into the vehicle and into the engine compartment to cool the motor and to get to the radiator. With electric vehicles, you don't have that need, right? So in theory, you don't need a grill. Look at Tesla. There's no grill on Tesla. But does that take away from the brand? My response to that was, Absolutely. I don't care if you go full electric on a vehicle, but you best not lose that seven slot iconic grill. And I even suggested is make it cool, make it lighted, make it something, uh, but don't lose that seven slots. That is your icon. That is, that is what sets that brand apart. You know, to me, what makes an electric vehicle look electric is no grill and kind of loss of, of anything up front that gives it that style. So I'm not saying that they focused anything based on me, but it is cool that the concept of this uh, Grand Wagoneer S is a seven slot grill that actually has illumination in it. And same with the Recon. So I'm curious, if you were to go all electric, does that seven slot grill mean anything to you? Would you care if it went away and looked like a Tesla front end and they eliminated a grill? Uh, what are your thoughts as we progress into the EV or even hybrid? Granted, hybrid's still going to need cooling. But what are your thoughts as this, as this line progresses and evolves with that seven-slot grill? Should Jeep keep it or does it matter to you? As always, thanks for watching. This was just a brief update of what's been going on this month. Uh, stay tuned. Jeep's got a lot of stuff coming. The Ram 2500 is, uh, is about to drop. Uh, there's been teasers out there of what that is. There's an update there. I think we can kind of know what to expect already based on uh, on some of the updates we've seen on the other 1500 and the RHO and that kind of stuff. So that's kind of not going to be earth shattering. But if you're a Ram person, we'll have some stuff out there. We've also been doing a few reviews on some other vehicles. We just did a review on a Blazer EV and we did a comparison mostly because of price. And I know we do have some people that owned 4xe's and then did decide to go full electric in fact one of the moderators on our 4xe enthusiast page uh, did just switch over to a full electric blazer so i know there's interest both sides there so we've been doing some reviews on some other vehicles um, just because we know not everyone that follows our channel is a full jeep buyer so let's broaden the scope and uh let's let's share the love with uh, with some other automotive enthusiasts. If you have any content that you'd like us to cover, let us know in the description. Uh, have some conversation with what we talked about today. As always, please remember to give us a like, subscribe. It does help the channel, and we'll see you on the next video.